Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. Sometimes things that seem strange, mystical, obtuse, turn out to just be simple. They're just too simple for us. And our mind can't see them. I find Zen is that way, the deep teachings of Zen. So, for example, you could go to a Zen master, a great master, doesn't have to be Zen, and they could say to you something you will never understand. Things are neither good nor bad, they just are. To the Western mind, that is why did I bother? Why why did I climb the Himalayas to hear that things are neither good nor bad, they just are? And eventually you catch out, if you grow deep enough, that things are neither good nor bad, they just are. What does that mean? The way I like to approach that, from a Western level of intellectual understanding, of logic, it's not illogical, it's not weird, it's just the truth is as follows. I like to get everybody's ire up by saying there are no problems. Sometimes people want to talk to me, but can we talk personally about a particular problem I'm having? And I pretty much always say no. (laughs) It's an emergency or somebody really needs to, I'll feel that, but generally I don't. Why? Because there are no problems. And the very fact that you're calling it a problem is the problem. So the fact that you want to talk to me about this problem, this very personal, special problem you have, means that we can't talk. Because you want to talk in Chinese and I speak English. They're just totally different languages. All right? So what does it mean that someone can say there are no problems? You have no problems. You have no problems. You've never had a problem. There are no problems. No one has a problem. What is a problem? What do you mean by a problem? I'm lecturing, so I get to tell you. But you can disagree later, all right? What you mean by a problem, listen to me before you react, is that something is not the way you want it to be. That's what a problem is, every problem. Something is not the way you want it to be. And we can prove it very simply, right? What if it is the way you want it to be? Then is it a problem? What if you couldn't care less how it is? You're completely indifferent about it. Then is it a problem? Okay, there's only three things it can be. It's not the way you want it to be, you couldn't care less, or it is the way you want it to be. Mm, there's a real clue in that. In other words, it, you ever hear the expression, it takes two to tango? It takes an event outside and a way you want it to be. Your preference, your view about it. The combination of those two things are required for a problem. Nothing in and of itself is a problem. Nothing, 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 (laughs) nothing in and of itself is a problem. It's an event. It's something that happened. A tree fell down in Madagascar and nobody announced it to anybody. Nobody even noticed. Is it a problem? No. To anybody? No. A tree fell down in Madagascar on top of somebody's house. You don't know them. Nobody told you about it. Is it a problem to them? A tree fell down on top of somebody's house in the midst of the most ugly war of the Joneses, whatever it was called, divorce, all right? And she was going to end up with the house or he was going to end up with the house and you hated it and the judge just did the ruling and that night after the ruling, the tree fell down and crushed the house. Didn't kill the person, just crushed the house. Is that a problem? Not to you. It's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. That that, after all this, that that could happen the night of the divorce, you decide what it is. I'm going to go very slow tonight. I don't normally go slow. You decide whether it's a problem or not. It's your decision. You're getting engaged. And your beloved brings you a ring. Is it a problem if it's a small stone? Is it a problem if it's a really big, gaudy stone? Is it a problem if it's not even? It's something he made by himself in the shop. It's wood. Uh, she lit up thinking, wow, would he do that for me? I was just saying, you decide. 
you are deciding these things. Your mind is deciding whether this is going to be a problem or not. So if you had a dream the night before that your Prince Charming rode up and gave you this big diamond and, and people were starving in the kingdom because you had this big diamond. And so he took it away and brought you this little one and fed all the people. And then that day, your beloved came to you and engaged to you and said, I thought that this was appropriate. And it was a little diamond. Oh, your heart would just melt. He's Prince Charming. Do you understand that? And if you had a different dream, it would be a different way. You are doing this. You are doing this. Things are events. They are things that happen. Somebody walks up to you and gives you something. Somebody walks up to you and doesn't give you something. Somebody walks up to you and gives you something that has great meaning to them, but it's kind of like, a, you know, like that little finger painting that the two-year-old made. Look, mommy, look. What is it? She says to you, little kid, you have no idea what it is. You know how to answer. I was like, what is that? <laughs> you know I me? Mean? It's just like either you see it as beautiful, it's just this beautiful thing that your child made, okay? Or you had enrolled your child into prodigy art school, and this is what she came home with <laughs> for what you're paying. <laughs> I was like, it's yours. I could just do this all night with you. It is yours. So let's start that way. You decide if something is a problem. You can just as easily decide that it's not a problem. It's an event. I love when I see these. It really inspires me. People who have serious issues. You know, we, we have some people in, in the group that have terminal cancer. You would never know it. Ever. Never. You know, you talk to these people that are filled with light and joy and happiness and laughing. And that's all there is to it. Right? And so on. You look at that and you realize, now this is most people would call a serious problem. And this person is not defining it as a problem. They're defining it as what happened next. <laughs> Got stage four cancer, right? Well, who would have thunk it? Okay, we'll deal with this. We'll do the thing. That's very inspiring to me. Do you understand that? I think that's beautiful. That means much more to me than looking at rich people's houses or beautiful cars or anything like that. You're looking at a really high soul, aren't you? You're looking at a great being. You're looking at a person who's living the teachings. So... Even these terrible things, that's what you want to say to me. What about terrible things? What if your house burns down? What if your child dies? What if you get terminal cancer? Okay? Nobody's saying you laugh. Nobody's saying you're giddy. Nobody's saying it's fun like that, right? It's just not a problem. It is the next thing you get to interact with in your dance with life. Life is unfolding. It has always unfolded. It unfolds everywhere. Always remember what is what is happening to you at this moment that looks so traumatic. How many other things are happening in the universe at the same moment? Hundred billion, zillion? Wherever you're standing, I always wonder whether I can communicate this to you. This is how I see the universe. Wherever I'm standing, I happen to see what's going on there. If I was standing somewhere else, I would see what's going on there. If I was standing somewhere else, I would see what's going on there. It has nothing to do with me. So if, if the house that I live in burns down, look at all the houses that didn't burn down. Really? A lot, I'll have to go somewhere else. So there's nothing. All right? Do I need to deal with it? Of course I need to deal with it. Nobody's saying that you're not dealing with it. The question is, are you defining it as a problem or are you defining it as the next experience in your life? Someone you love with all your heart dies Please don't walk around thinking I'm saying you're supposed to be laughing. No, of course you're not doing that. Of course your heart feels heavy. Of course there's a sadness and a sense of loss. Is that a problem? It's one thing to be experiencing what's happening. That's reality. It needs to be dealt with. It's another thing to define it as a problem. Defining it as a problem means I don't want it. I resist it. This is not okay with me. All right. That you just took it personal. You already had a situation to deal with. Now you have a problem to deal with. Why did you do that? You don't have to do that. 
it's enough for me to deal with the fact that my house burned down. I need to find out where we're going to stay with the kids. I need to get this whole thing together. Oh, my God. Boy, I didn't think I'd be doing this tonight in the middle of the night, right? It's another thing for me to be having a problem with it. To deal with it is different than having a problem with it. One is a psychological thing that you did. You resisted the situation. You refused to accept the situation. You refused to define the situation as the next thing that happened. It is by definition the next thing that happened. How do you know it's the next thing that happened? So I'm not questioning that life doesn't always unfold the way we expect it and that some things are more difficult to deal with than others. Of course, that's a sport. That's the game. Some plays work. Some plays don't. Go talk to a running back. He runs through. He gets a touchdown. Or he hits a brick wall. It's a, all of life is this way. All of life is this way. There's the yin and the yang. There's just the, the balance of the unfolding of creation and you are present for it. The day you reach the point where you realize that's called interacting with reality. The fact that you decide to resist, decide to say no, 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 like a two-year-old, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's how they get. All right, don't they? All right, it's cute as a button for a two-year-old. But a grown-up, especially a spiritual grown-up, has their act together. They realize I do not need to lay my psychological neurosis on top of this situation that I need to deal with. I can just deal with the situation. That is spirituality. That is what it's meant. We'll keep coming back to. That is what's meant by there is no right or wrong. There's just being. Things just are. You're the one who labels them. <laughs> You're the one who goes out there and inside your head decides if they match what you want or not. And if they don't match what you want, they're wrong, aren't they? And if they really don't match what you want, they're really wrong. And someone's going to pay for this. Yeah, you. You're going to pay for it, all right? <laughs> because if an event took place, do you understand what I mean when I say you're going to pay for it? If an event took place, then it actually took place. I'm not talking about whether you can deal with it ahead of time. I'm saying an event took place. There it is. It's done. Okay? If you cannot honor that, if you cannot respect that, if you cannot accept its right to exist, you are out of harmony with reality. And you will pay a price. How big of a price? Every day of your life, you will ruin your life because you did not accept that. If they took your blankie away when you were four and you didn't want it taken away and you can't accept it, go ask the psychologist. It'll bother you for the rest of your life. All right? It doesn't need to. If your ex-husband was very weird and you had a very hard time with it, but you divorced 15 years ago and you couldn't handle what the life was like with him, it was just totally unacceptable and it was a difficult divorce and a difficult situation, and you did not accept that, you did not honor the reality, I'm out, this is what happened, then you will carry it around for the rest of your life. You did not get divorced. I don't know why you bother getting divorced. The arguments are still going on in your head. The resentment is still being felt in your heart. Every time you see him or hear his name, you feel ill. And you're carrying around inside of you, not the repercussions of the first marriage. You're carrying around inside of you your inability to honor and respect the reality of the first marriage. Do you see the difference? One, there's nothing you can do about. It happened. It's over. The other, not only can you do something about it, you're the one who's doing it. You're the one who's holding this inside of you. You're the one who continues years later to sit there and say, no, I don't accept that that happened. And so what this is all about, this deep stuff that there is no right or wrong, there just is, is a wise person reaches that state. They really do, where they realize, I cannot control it. I, mean, I want to take the easiest part for you. I sure as heck can't control what already happened, can I? <laughs> You want to argue about whether I control what will happen? Eh, have fun. You discuss philosophy with people. I'm telling you, no one can control what already happened, can they? <laughs> All right? It's the past. It's already happened. If you can't even accept the reality of what is by fact unchangeable, then there's something wrong with you. And that's how you have to look at it. This is not a luxury item. This is a psychological problem. If you can't accept the reality of the past, you got some work to do. You need to understand this is not a joke. If you're carrying around inside of you scars, 
due to past experiences that have happened to you, the scars are not there because of the experience. Wait, let's get it very strange. It'll be very logical. An experience that already happened and isn't happening anymore cannot scar you. It's not even there. What mommy did when you were five is completely irrelevant. You're 55 years old. It's not happening anymore. How can it be bothering you? How can it be something? I mean, if something is bothering you that's not happening, I'm telling you, you need to go to a doctor. Trouble is there aren't enough doctors for us and the doctors need doctors because everybody accepts that that which is not happening still bothers them, don't they? They don't even know that they have the right to not. All right. And all that your spiritual teachings are saying to you is, come on. Right. What did Christ say? And there's something in the Bible that says something like, let the evils of today be sufficient unto today or something like that. That is the teaching. Be here now. You see, Ramdas wasn't the first one to say be here now. Be here now. What is going on today, the problems, the issues of today are sufficient. The fact that you are carrying the things from the past How can something that's not happening be bothering you? I just want it to sound so logical that you're embarrassed, right? How can something that is not happening be bothering you? There's only one way. You're doing it. You are inside yourself, in your mind, in your psyche, deciding to continue to be bothered by it, even though it's not happening. Okay? You need to stop this. That is what spirituality means. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't make it right. Just because you've always done it doesn't make it right. You do not need to be bothered by that which is not happening. It's enough to deal with what is happening. But boy, if you're being bothered by what happened before, you got work to do. Let's just stay on that for a second. Because you know darn well, you are being bothered by what happened before. People talking about what happened in high school, what happened in junior high school, what their first boyfriend or girlfriend did, what their parents did. Why are you even thinking of such a thing? It doesn't even exist. Every moment that you let that occupy your consciousness, you are missing the reality of what's unfolding in front of you now. It's not real. It's just that you haven't learned how to let it go. You need to let it go. Now, when we're done, you're welcome to argue with me about how important it is to have a collector's album of every single thing that happened in your entire life that bothered you. If you think that's necessary... You're wrong. So people say to me, because they try to be intellectual, but aren't I supposed to learn from it? If I let it go, how will I learn from it? Very good. I don't know exactly what you think you need to learn from your blankie when you were six or from mommy and daddy getting divorced. I don't know. I don't know what you think it is. But in any event, here's the answer to that from a spiritual point of view. You do not have to hold something in your mind to have been affected by it to have learned it. In fact, when you hold it in your mind, you limited how much you learned it. It is when it passes through your mind and merges into your being that you learn it. We call it, he knew it by heart. He can play the piano by heart. He can recite it by heart. You don't have to think. There's nothing going on with the mind. It's just, it just went deep enough inside your being into the chi, into the shakti, that it recalls itself. It's just naturally part of your being. If you touched a hot stove once, you don't need to be afraid of stoves. You don't need to never cook again. Do you hear me? Just because you got burned by a stove when you were eight? I am telling you, you got burned when you were eight. You will know not to touch it again. You learned that. It became, you don't have to think, oh, remember when I was eight, I got burned? I better not touch the stove again. Nobody does that. It is a natural part of your being. Now, maybe when you were eight, you didn't know. When you never experienced it, it's understandable. You don't know. Once you do know, then you know. Knowing is deeper than mind. Mind is memory. That's too slow. (laughs) You can sit there and remember these things. I'm telling you, when the experience comes all the way through, passes through your senses, and passes past your mind, It merges into your being. This is where a spiritual being lives. Every experience, they feel it come all the way back and then pour into their being like water falling into the ocean. And they never think about it again. But it's there instantly. It's like it's so intuitive. It becomes intuitive. That's where it's intuitive, not memory, not logic. It's intuitive. I used to, when I would teach, 
I used to try it and or tutor or do something with my friends. It's like I didn't understand. They tried to learn it by memorizing. I never did. I would sit there and get it until it made sense to me, to where it wouldn't matter if I ever remembered anything I read. I could refigure it out by myself. I don't care if it was Freud. I don't care if it was this or that, whatever the heck it was. You just imbibe it until it becomes part of your being. Then there's nothing to learn. There's nothing to know. There's nothing to study. You you invented it. You could invent it just like they did. That's what it means to let something all the way in. But we don't do that. We hold it at the psychological level, and then it becomes a scar. Then it becomes something that actually interferes with your ability so right now, you didn't do well in algebra, but you were good with some other stuff. But you remember the quadratic equation was a big problem to you. So now you're sitting there doing something 30 years later. And somebody says, I really think that algebra could do this. You get weird. You start closing down. You know, I don't know how to do that. And even 50 years later, all right, that didn't help you. That left a scar inside of you. So what it is that you learned with your mind, I'm telling you is a problem because you will always think from your mind and it will give, God, it's so deep. I can't even talk about it. If I were talking to surgeons, doctors here, you diagnose somebody, you look at somebody, you look at their symptoms. There are 50 different diseases that could cause those symptoms. You just saw a patient and you diagnosed it correctly. Others got it wrong, but you got it right. Okay. And you went through it and it was, this was the one that it was. So that symptom was this particular thing. Do you understand that if three weeks later you walk into a room and there was a totally different patient in a totally different place, you were visiting somewhere, right? No association. Your mind is going to tell you that that symptom is the diagnosis that you got to last time. Somehow it won't be one in 50. That one will carry a larger weight. And guess what? Your mind is wrong. There is no difference. The fact that that turned out to be that, that time, but it left an impression on your mind. This is a problem. That is what you've done with all your situations in your life. You have let them stay in your mind. And so now they're, they're like votes and they say that everything's about them. It's not true. The situations that are unfolding today are not about what happened to you before. They're about what's happening right now. But your mind, because you held it at the mental level, is going to always freely associate what is you're experiencing with what happened before, especially things you didn't like and things you did like. If you watch it, you'll see that's what it's doing all the time. It's just, oh, I like that. It reminds me of my sister. It's not your sister. It's so stupid. Well, I don't like that. The last Paul I went out with, oh, God, was he a loser? I don't, I don't want to go out. You just missed your soulmate. But I'm telling you, you're going to do it. That's what the mind does. And so you get to the point where you understand. I'm just taking the past now as we take this. Things are neither good nor bad. They just are. You need to not do this with your past. You need to see it's serious about this. It's nice talk, but this is serious. You need to be done with your past. You need to be done with your past. If you want to have a beautiful life, if you want to experience the flowers, if you want to experience the birds, if you want to experience people, if you want to experience giving of yourself, if you want to experience life, you can't have anything about your personal past going on inside of you because it's going to steal your consciousness. Has anybody noticed that? Everything will start to look like it's associated with that. You'll be driving down the road. I know you never do this. You'll be driving down the road instead of looking at the trees and the flowers and different things. You'll be thinking about what happened three years ago even though it has nothing to do with what's going on. You'll finish conversations with your parents who are both dead. I know it's true. It's frighteningly true. You are missing your life by allowing your consciousness to participate in the neurosis of your past and the craziness of the fact that you let stuff build up in your mind instead of pass through into your being. So I showed you two reasons it's bad. One is it never made it back to you, so it didn't imbibe itself as an intuitive understanding to the depth of your being. That's one problem. 
And then the second problem is you didn't like it or you liked it, so you held it in your mind. That required chi, shakti, and now everything has to pass through that veil to make it to you, and it's going to tinge and distort everything that's happening to you. Pay attention. This is not a theoretical discussion. This is how you destroy your life. And then you end up worried and scared, and but you're all you're doing that because you're past. If I ask people, say, I'm very nervous. Why? I don't know. I've been that way since high school. I just felt people. There you go. There you go. I was okay till high school. Then I just started feeling judged. And what are you doing? You're, you're 52 years old. What are you doing? Being affected by something that happened when you were 16 or 17. But doesn't that sound stupid? I want it to sound stupid. <laughs> I swear to God. I, we could talk about how to stop doing it. But you're never going to stop doing it when you think it's logical to do it. But the minute you realize, this is stupid. Why am I smoking? Why am I getting lung cancer? It, it just doesn't make any sense. And guess what's else stupid? To eat candy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay? It's stupid. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. It's not going to do anything any good. All right? So that's how you feel about your body. Why are you with the psyche? Why can't I talk to you the same way? Is there something you're doing that has zero benefit, only harm, and it is destroying your life? Why can't I tell you stop doing it? Why does it just make perfect sense of what benefit is it to have all that past garbage inside of you bothering you and distorting the reality of your situation? And eventually you will look at it through witness consciousness. You'll watch it and you'll say, he's right. There is no benefit of this. <laughs> it's, it's driving me crazy to truth in my life. I am going to not carry it inside of me. You just start saying that. I am not going to carry this baggage, this garbage, this anchor of my past inside of my psyche. All right. How do I not? How do I let it be? All right. How do I do that? You are interacting with something. You're a conscious being. That's what it means to be mindful. And you notice that this sweet little past with its beautiful aroma has returned to compete with your consciousness. All right? It gave you darshan. It showed up. All right? And you're having trouble interacting with reality because it's trying to steal your consciousness. Your heart is hurting. Your mind is remembering things. You get nervous. The, the way she's standing, that, that's, that's what, how Sally sat before she broke up with me. Is she going to break up with me? <laughs> it's so funny. The person you're dealing with now is not Sally. Even the body language isn't the same. What are you doing? You're being neurotic. All right? But that's how we are, isn't it? And so you look at it and you decide, the next time my beautiful past decides to come up inside of me, I'm going to let it go. You don't have to go look for it. It will come up by itself. It will show up when you're driving down the street. It will show up when you're eating something. It will remind you of something when you were little. Do you understand that? When it comes up, don't yell at it. Don't fight with it. Just give a little kiss on the forehead and say, God, I'm so sorry. You were trying, as a uh, Maharishi from Tim used to teach his people, the Beatles including, that everything was coming in and it was passing through the universe but it had to pass through you to continue its journey through the universe, as that song across the universe, right? Everything's just coming and going. It's just passing through. But it doesn't make it through you, does it? <laughs> it gets stuck. It's like flypaper in there. And so this poor little thing, this poor little event, is trying to finish its journey through the universe, and you stopped it. So it's not its fault. So when it comes up and it appears, you know, the bad dinner you had and now your word is going to be bad again, what are you doing? You just look at it and you say, oh, I'm so sorry. You have to start, really, if you do stupid things, you need to apologize, even to yourself. Like if you stop smoking, apologize to your lungs. Those are cells in there. They're alive. They were doing a function. They were trying to take care of you. They were trying to take in oxygen and pass it into the blood supply so the cells could be fed. And you decided to fill it with smoke. <laughs> the way you look at it, you're doing it, right? You decided to just fill that with smoke so that they're choked and they can't do their function. So if you stop smoking, at some point you sit down 
and you apologize. They are living cells. You just look in there and you feel remorse. You feel a sense of, I am sorry. Because of my neurosis and my nervousness that made me smoke, I have abused you. I didn't take care of you. You were a gift that was given to me. Get that way with your organs. You understand that? Get that way with your body. You should be saying saying thank you to your body. Talk about not being grateful. There's trillions of cells, trillions. Some people say, what, 10, 12, 14 trillion cells in your body every single day that are carrying out these complex functions. They're chemists. They break chemistry down. Oh, my God, I can talk about it, right? When was the last time you thanked them? Because if they stopped doing what they were doing, by the way, if one of them stops doing what they're doing, they call it cancer. (laughs) If it doesn't divide properly, right? Any of them stop doing what they're doing, you're in big trouble. And you just take it all for granted. You thank your body. You thank the cells, just like you would thank anybody else. All right, so we get that taken care of physically. Psychologically, you do the same thing. You think I'm kidding. You need to change your entire relationship with yourself. And so when something comes up from the past that is creating disturbance inside of you, you let it go. You give it a little hug if you need to. You give it a little hug. You kiss it on the forehead, and you apologize. People say, how do I let go of this? That's how, with love. You apologize. I am so sorry that I have kept you stuck inside of me for 35 years. This little, don't think about the event. Don't get back into it. Or you'll get sucked in. Just, I'm sorry. That's a whole new relationship that you can have with this past junk you're carrying inside of you. You apologize for keeping it stuck inside of you, and then you pass it on, you help it on, on its way through the universe. It's just trying to merge with everything. You understand that? It's not trying to stay inside of you. It's got nothing against you. You're the one that couldn't handle it, so you stopped it inside of you. So I'm saying to you, the next time it comes up, no matter how small or big it is, you kiss it, you apologize, and you offer it up so it has the right to continue its way. But what if it comes back? Do it again. But what if it comes back? Do it again. You can't lock a kid in the closet for three years and then decide, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Let him out and think he's going to be fine, right? I told him I was sorry. Why is he being so weird? It's the same thing with your psyche. You broke it. You broke it by keeping all this stuff inside of you. So you get to the point where you start having these healthy relationships with yourself. You sit there and realize events unfold in this world. That's beautiful. That's not bad. That's neat. And the events that are happening in front of me are just one billion trillionth of all the events that are happening. It's not a big deal. Whatever it is, it's fine. It's just my experience of the moment of reality. And then you let them go and you you put your being into it. If you haven't let them go in the past and you haven't, you've stored them inside of you, then you start letting them go. But people come to me and say, but I don't know how to do that. I love it. Just say to me, come to me and say, I can't do that. And all I'm going to do is correct your English a little bit. I'm just going to change it to, I haven't learned to do that yet. That's different than saying, I can't do that. I haven't learned to do that yet. It's like anything else you haven't learned to do yet. Learn it. I hope I've convinced you. This is pretty important stuff, isn't it? This is like the mo- this thing about the past, when I talk about it, I get very inspired. <laughs> hear me? There is nothing more important than letting go of your past. It is an anchor that is destroying your life. It's just this, oh my God. So when this thing comes up, be grateful that it came up. If you start thinking about what happened when you were little, you think about what your sister did, you think about what the first husband did, you think about whatever the heck it is. Good, wonderful, wonderful. You wouldn't, if, it, if it wasn't in there, it wouldn't be coming up. All right. And so it comes up and I'm telling you, get to the point where you've done enough work on yourself, where you are glad it came up. You throw it a party. That's what I want. I want to, to feel welcome. I want it to feel welcome on its way out. Da, 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 da. All right. Here it comes. Come on. Come on. It's time for a party. Come cleanse. And you kiss it on the forehead and you apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I kept in the dark down there in that hole called the subconscious. Like a dungeon, I kept you locked down there. I didn't even let you come up and say hello to me. I don't have nothing to do with you. I just kept shoving you back down every time. Shut up. Shut up. Hear me? I just don't. Come on. And so you decide to change your entire relationship with that. And I'm telling you, if you did nothing, nothing, in your spiritual practice. But what I'm talking about with the path, you would reach the highest state that could possibly exist with your past. 
right? If you stop carrying your past inside of you, I'm telling you, that's like 80% of what's going on in there is you got all this junk you've built up over the years and now you're looking out into the world and it's stimulating your junk. And then you're interacting with that instead of interacting with the world, <laughs> right? That's the reality of what's going on. And you wonder why you're having so much trouble. If you will get rid of this stuff from the past, you will free 80% of your chi, of your shakti. And it will start going up instead of down. And you won't have to maintain all this garbage inside. Right? Which would you rather do? Every single time somebody comes into your house, you have to make believe it's clean and hide the stuff that's dirty. Or just clean the thing. Clean the house. Then people can come visit. You don't have to hide everything. You don't have to go neurotic every time somebody comes. It's the same thing inside yourself. Clean it. Clean it. And so you just start learning to let go of your past. If you let go of your past, then the stuff that's happening now won't hit your past. It's an amazing thing. In the third Zen patriarch, that deep writing that starts with the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. It's one of the deepest spiritual writings ever written. There's a line that says, when a thing can no longer offend you, it ceases to exist in the old way. When a thing can no longer offend you, it ceases to exist in the old way. If an event can take place outside, and not hit your stuff, then it's a totally different thing than it used to be, isn't it? Because it used to be the thing that hit your stuff. <laughs> That's what it used to be, right? It used to be that two tango thing, right? It moved, you jumped, you flinched, you got scared, you desirous, it hit your stuff. So now there's a whole different relationship between you and that thing. But what if a thing can no longer do that to you? It just, a tree is a tree, a woman is a woman. A man's a man. An ex-husband's an ex-husband. Things just are what they are, right? They're not hitting anything inside of you. Then they cease to exist in the old way. Isn't that beautiful? So when a thing can no longer offend you, it ceases to exist in the old way. That is equivalent to saying things are neither good nor bad. They just are. Why? Because you label them as good and bad because they hit your past. The moment an event can unfold in front of you and not hit your stuff, guess what it does? It touches your soul. The moment events can unfold in front of you and not hit your past, your stuff, your personal reaction, they make it all the way through. And I'm telling you, they touch your being. It's like God's hand reaching in and massaging you. You have moments like that, very few. Maybe your first child. You hold this child and you're, you melt. There's none of you there. It transcends your personal self. Somebody you've always loved and been attracted to, all of a sudden you're in the embrace and it's the first kiss. That first kiss is like, whoo, magic. It made it past you and it touches like your whole being. It touches you at such a deep level. I would say the sunset, you turn the corner and this beautiful sun is setting, totally unexpected. It's like a divine experience, a spiritual experience. That's because it made it past you. Everything will be like that. You will start to live a life where everything is intimate moment. Maslow talked about self-actualization when the peak experiences start happening. That's what he's talking about. There is this thing called the peak experience. The peak experience is when the reality of life, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, comes in and you don't resist. You are neither resisting nor clinging. You are just there and it is free to pass all the way back into your being. I swear it feels like a river pouring into the ocean as opposed to a dam that's trying to control the river. See the difference? Imagine what it feels like to the ocean to have all those rivers pouring into it. It must feel good. You hear me? They just come in, they merge. Isn't that beautiful? Just fresh. They've been through the whole cycle and been purified by the earth. That's what life is supposed to feel like to you. All these different events just come in and they bathe over you and you become wiser and wholer and every single day you're a greater being than you were the day before because the day before you hadn't had the experiences you had today man that's the bottom line isn't it <laughs> okay every day you are a greater being every single day you are a greater being than you were the day before because you experienced what happened today and you had by definition not had that experience yet that's what's supposed to happen. That's what it means to return to the garden. 
That's what it means to live in the garden. You have to work by the sweat of your own brow. It's just happening naturally. You're just like little children. You're just experiencing the beauty of the learning of every experience. Let there be one, just one, that you resist and you're dead. Because then it will stay inside of you. And then every other experience has to pass through it. And you'll say, well, this wasn't as bad as that, but it could be. Well, at least it was better than that. Do you understand that? You'll look at everything from that point of view. And then you'll look around scared that'll happen again. Right? It literally just won. If you just won. That's, again, the third Zen Patriarch. I told you we're going to do Zen tonight. Right? He says one line. Make the slightest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. Make the slightest distinction of good and bad or right or wrong or like or dislike. Make the slightest distinction and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. So this is not a game. This is your life. And so you decide, I'm going to change how I live. I'm going to change the whole relationship I have with myself. I'm going to wake up in the morning and say, oh boy, I get to be a greater being than I was yesterday because I'm going to have the experiences of today. And I'm going to challenge myself, and boy, it is a challenge to say that if I get out of the way, every experience is growthful. Every experience has something to teach me. Every experience can touch to the core of my being and shake me and vibrate me and fill me, even what you call bad experiences. They are just experiences that I hadn't had before and I didn't expect them, but man, I am going to embrace them. I am going to let every single thing pass into me. All right? And people misunderstand. That doesn't mean that you don't deal with life. I like that. I get a lot of writing in the new book. People say to me, but how can you say yes to everything? You can't say yes to everything. How do you know when not to say yes? All right? It is not about saying yes to everything. It is about what I just said. It is about letting go of yourself. If in the beginning, in order to let go of myself, I started saying yes to things instead of listening to myself that was always saying no, then yes, that's a spiritual technique. But when it's said and done, it is about letting go of yourself. It is about this part of Mickey that I have built up by collecting my past is not going to ever again affect one single thing that happens in my life. It's not his life. I am living life's life. He's in the way. He's like a tail that I don't need anymore. <laughs> I have absolutely no interest in what he's got to say. Well, if you can let go of yourself, then what? Then you interact with life. Life will come and you will know what to do. It will be so obvious it's ridiculous. It will come to you and you will dance with it. And there are times the dance is that you will help somebody get what they want. There are times the dance is you will lead somebody right away from what it is that they want that they shouldn't be dealing with, right? You will know what to do. I don't know how to tell you. The only reason you don't know what to do now is because you're in the way. It is a confused mess in there. Why is it confused? Because you had all these past experiences. Some of them you liked, some of you didn't. You kept them all inside of you and you labeled them. There's nothing saying that the blue on your little blanket that you took away too soon, so now blue is bad, it's not the same blue that your boyfriend came and gave you this beautiful shawl when you were 40, 30 years old and you loved it more than anything. You love him more than anything. And it happens to be blue. Now you've got two blues stored in there. One bad, one good. Well, how do I know who's going to show up? I don't know. Nobody said that it makes sense in there. You've just had tons of experience at different times of your life and they all got stored in there as a confused mess. It's just so beautiful to see. It's because nobody said it's going to make sense. Nobody said it's patterned. They're just experiences you had that you decided to like or dislike and you judged them accordingly. So while you have that veil of your personal self built inside of you, you can't do anything. You can't see anything. So figure out your own way how to let go of that thing. I shared my early path was to say, I ain't listening to him. Well, what do you listen to? I'll listen to life. <laughs> it was fun. You hear me? If you are no longer listening to it and it's no longer interfering with anything, it's not even like there's a struggle anymore. Life is unfolding and you're there with it. 
Okay? Somebody looking at you is not going to look like you said yes to every single person. Somebody walks up to you and says, here, have a drink. No. He told me, no, I don't drink. Why? You said you say yes to everything. Here, shoot up with heroin. Right? And they're literally writing me like that. So you should say yes? No. You just don't understand. It is about transcending yourself. Let go of yourself. Learn how to do that. Use whatever techniques you need. And then it is going to be so easy. It is so obvious. It is so straightforward what it is you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing life. And you will know exactly what to do. There will never be one decision that you have any difficulty with. There will never be any confusion ever again for the rest of your existence. Your veil is the confusion. Life is not confusing. You are participating in the unfolding of the universe. And it's a totally natural thing to do. But you can't do that while you are carrying this garbage. So I focus on a couple of things of the garbage. The biggest one is the past. I swear, if I didn't lecture on anything else ever again, I would like to teach you to let go of your past. And guess what? I already did. But what are the techniques to want to? You do all kinds of things you want to do. You figure them out pretty good for yourself. How can you not want to do this? It's ruined your life. And so you decide, if my past comes up, I'm going to find a way to let it go. I gave you a cute way, right? Give it a little kiss on the head, apologize, take ownership, don't blame it, because then you're going to push it back down or you're going to get mad at it. Apologize that you weren't conscious enough at the time to let it go about its journey and pass through you so it only bothered you for 10 seconds or whatever it is, or even for two months because somebody you love died. Yes, it's a problem. Bother. But then it's over. Things are over. Not inside of you, are they? <laughs> right? And so you don't build this thing inside of you. You let it go, let it pass. And I'll say, you can offer it, offer it up. But it hurts when it comes up. That's because it was stored with pain. It's going to come up with pain. Oh, I forgot to tell you that. If you stored it with pain, if that was a traumatic experience you had when you were little and you stored it down there, but can't you make it so it comes up with no pain? No. No. Because the growth that you need, you who's in there, is how to be able to relax and release as this birth of your soul is taking place. And therefore, you let it go. It's, it's, it's not pain. It's friction because of your resistance. There's no pain. There's no pain. There's no nerves in there. Don't you dare call that pain. Pain is what happens when the nerves get stimulated and send messages back to the brain. What this is called is resistance. What this is called is there is an energy that's trying to pass through you and you have decided it's not going to. And therefore, you push against it. It creates heat. It creates disturbance. All right? That's what it feels like to resist reality. You get really weird, and it gets very uncomfortable. Well, the answer is very straightforward. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And you just do it as much as you can. And don't worry. As many times as you need to do it, you just relax and release. Relax and release. Welcome it. Welcome it. And boy, are you going to see a change in your being. And then someday a big one's going to come up. The little ones are easy. Once you want to do them, you start getting more energy and you're enthusiastic. You know, it's tired. No wonder you're tired all the time. How could you not be tired? All the time? Look what you're doing. <laughs> you're, you're stopping all these things for your entire life from passing through you. Of course you're going to get tired and get spacey and have ADD and all that kind of junk. You let go of this stuff, that stuff's going away. You let this go. And the chi, the shakti, will feed you and you won't get tired like that and all this. Then something big will come up. I don't want to label it. I don't need to find out about it. All I know is it's bigger. How do you know? <laughs> you know. It starts to feel foundational. That's the word I use. It's structural. It's always been there. You've never, ever lived where it wasn't there. It was what was underneath everything. It built your entire personality. Anybody know anything about that? It's a foundational, structural part of your psyche. The point is, you don't want that in you. Don't start telling me, oh, then that's who I am. I'm this. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not who you are. You are the self who is noticing that there is this thing inside of you. You do not want to identify with it. You do not want to define it as okay. You want to sit there and say, this is going to be fun. <laughs>
<laughs> What's it going to be like to pass kidney stones when I ain't pass that? What's it going to be like to pass that? Don't worry about it. None of your business. All you have to do is be willing. That's all you have to do. And wait till you see it'll break into little pieces. This will happen or maybe this will be a really hot moment. But it will go. And you will then never be the same for the rest of your existence. By letting go of one of those at that level, you will never, ever be the same again. All right? It just released a whole foundational level of shakti, of energy, that then finds its way and rearranges your entire chakra system, your entire energy system. Right? And literally, you were there and you were a little bit heavy, and then all of a sudden, once this thing passes, there's literally sounds of shakti pouring out your sahasra and your ajna chakra. You didn't do a single thing. Day and night, that's all that's happening because you passed that. Why? It was blocking the shakti. It was blocking your spiritual energy. So this willingness to let these things go, this is not a minor talk. This is your life, the entire purpose of your life. Once you do this, as the third Zen patriarch said, you will look out on the world and guess what you'll see? Not me. Now when you look out on the world, you see you. You understand that? Because it hits your stuff. When you let go of enough of this stuff, all of a sudden, the world is totally different. It's this dance. It's this beautiful, oh my God, it's art. It's just unfolding. The days are bringing surprises and different things are happening. Up, down, left, right, cold, hot. Oh my God, there's so many yin yang. That's what they talk about with yin yang. It's just coming and going and passing and, and you start enjoying it. Even the hard things. They're like, oh, we're going to do that today. And you don't have a problem with it. You deal with it. There's a difference between having a problem with it and dealing with it. I taught that to you, didn't I? All right. And the next thing you know, there's no good and bad. There's no right and wrong. That, not meaning you go out and do wrong things, but it's not like this shouldn't have happened and this should. That's what it means when it says no right or wrong. It doesn't mean you become immoral. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what you're doing because you wouldn't do anything anymore, right? It just means you're not looking outside saying you're right, you're wrong. Okay? You're just looking outside and seeing what's there. So you transcend that. And all of a sudden, there's no success. There's no fa- You wouldn't know how to define success or failure. It's just fun. And all of a sudden, you reach the state I started with. Things are neither good nor bad. They just are. Not so weird anymore, is it? Right? But you have to be done. You have to be done with you. Done. So it means to be done. There's no more personal stuff in there. Or at least you're not paying attention to the personal stuff. You're not hanging out with it. There'll always be something. But it hits it, you let it go. Be grateful. All right? It's just an opportunity to get closer to God. It's an opportunity to let go once again. So this is what it's about. Do you understand that? All we did was take a simple saying, things are neither right nor wrong nor good nor bad. They just are. Makes sense now, doesn't it? It has to be true. All right? Get there. Get there. Enjoy the process of letting go of yourself. And for God's sakes, if you heard nothing else from this teaching, are you willing to stop carrying your past inside of you? There's of no benefit to that. So stop putting things in there now. Never put another thing in there. Accept whatever happens and let it go. Then deal with it. And the stuff that comes up from the past, throw it a party, welcome it, kiss it, offer it. Do not ever push it back down. Do not ever complain that it came up. Don't do that. You want to release this stuff. And you're going to see changes so fast. Do you know a true yogi is not the same from one day to the next? They literally see a change in their being on a daily basis. They are a different person every single day because they had more experiences, they're better at things, and because they let go more of the stuff they were carrying inside. So now you walk into the next day like an expert, more of an expert, and then you'll be another one, and you'll be another one. It's a beautiful process. All right, work on these things. Jai Griffin.